There we go. Welcome to it, the next of our Bonnie Tass Comrades Marathon webinars. I am Brad Brown. It's uh, good to have you with us. I'm just checking my phone to make sure that we, we are live and we've got uh, the Comrades coach, Lindsay Perry, with us as well and uh, Shona Hendricks as well. And I'll do proper introductions in just a moment. But if you can see and hear us, if you wouldn't mind, please letting us know uh, in the comments below. So if let us know uh, that you can see us, that you can hear us, and also let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, I know we've got people from around the world who are really interested uh, in what's happening uh, around Comrades this year, and there are going to be lots of questions, I'm sure. So uh, please do let me know in the comments where you are joining us from tonight. We'd love to sort of give you a shout out. I see uh, we do have a few people on, which is good. Uh, Henny is on, which is awesome. Henny for Nikak. Uh, We've got Tommy Vilakazi from the Comrades Marathon Association with us as well. Uh, Nicola Ward saying all clear and good, fantastic. Uh, Mark from Tunzi is um, Tunzi is with us as well. All right, let's get straight into it. Lindsay, uh, man, weird times we've been uh, sort of experiencing the last month or so. How are you doing? You're, you're in lockdown at home in, in four ways. Oh, pretty good. Um, I've got a, a, a treadmill which which is really helpful. So managing to stay healthy and uh, get some exercise, which is really going to be the focus of the webinar today. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, Shona Hendricks with us as well. Shona, nice to have you on. Excuse me looking to my right because that's where the controls are. But Shona, nice to have you on as well. Yeah, thanks, Brad. It's, uh, it's good to be here and, and always enjoy these and chatting to everyone. So yeah, thanks for having me. And, and you're in lockdown in Pretoria as it uh, stands right now. So we are all over. I'm in Cape Town and it's a chilly Cape Town as well, I might add. So I've been a bit uh, windy and uh, a bit rainy here today. So that's been pretty good as well. Let me jump straight into sharing my screen with you guys so that we can start getting things underway tonight. So I'm going to just uh, present it so that you can basically see Exactly. Hopefully you can see everything that's on the screen now. If it's cool with you, I'm just going to shift my camera around so I can stare straight into, uh, there we go, that's better. And then I'll turn this light off if that's good. That's perfect. All right, cool. So let's get straight into what we are going to be running through in tonight's uh, webinar. So uh, we're going to be looking at where does the comrades postponement leave us right now, okay? What we need to focus on for the next four weeks we're going to be talking a lot about strength training tonight, and we've got some great examples for you. And then we've also got some resources to share uh, this evening. And hopefully that will uh, sort of answer a lot of your questions. As always, we love questions and comments, so please do keep them coming uh, in the comment section below this video where you are watching it right now. And we'll try and get to as many of those as we can tonight. So please do keep those coming. Uh, who are we? All right, so I did a, a brief introduction a little bit earlier. Lindsay is the official Comrades Marathon coach. He's coached winners right through to thousands of amateurs to, to, their, uh, to their Comrades goals. He's also been to two Olympic Games, two Commonwealth Games. Should have been going to Tokyo later this year, but that's not on the cards either, Lindsay. Disappointing. Yeah, look, it is a little disappointing, but again, just based on, on everything that's happened, um, you know, it's, it's par for the course. The world's a different place right now. And hopefully we will get on top of um, Corona and we'll be going to Tokyo the same time in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And also Lindsay is uh, a marathon uh, runner himself. He's got a PB of 245, which is stupid fast. Uh, I don't have a marathon PB of 40, 245, still not. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't get that in the last marathon I ran. I've been around comrades my whole entire life. My dad's got a green number. My brother's uh, inching very close to green. I've got an uncle who's run 14. So comrades has really been part of like my life from, from when I was young. Uh, and I ran my first one back in 2010. And if I can sort my foot out, I'm back for number four in 2020. Uh, Shona Hendricks is the head of sports science at uh, Semley, which I I'll let Shona, what does Semley stand for? I can never get it right. I know, I know it's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, sports Exercise Medicine and Lifestyle Institute. That's it. She's worked with all our female national football teams from under 17 right through to our senior national side, Banyana Banyana. Uh, she's also consulted to Kaiser Chiefs, Mamelodi Sundowns and Morocco Swallows uh, and worked with some uh, individual athletes as well. I know you worked with Caroline Wassman in the build-up to her win. You worked with the Olympic bronze medalist uh, Bridget Hartley. So yeah, some, some unbelievable credibility in here. As always, questions, like I said, please do pop them into the chat box below and we'll get to those this evening. So 
There we go. All right, Lindsay, let's jump straight into things. Where are we right now besides being locked down? Yeah, so exactly that. I mean, I, mean, I think that's the, the, the main point of exactly where are we now. Comrades has, has postponed and we don't have a, a, a new date. And I think um, that's why it was important for us to, to have a webinar and engage with the comrades, athletes and, and audience um, because people are at a loss. People are, are panicking and, and don't know what they should and shouldn't be doing. In South Africa in particular, we've got a, a particularly harsh lockdown in that we're not allowed outside of our homes. Um, and so that has caused a lot of anxiety for runners that were wondering what sh should they do if comrades were to go ahead on the 14th of June. But also now that it's postponed, they don't know when the new date is and they um, are probably still experiencing that and anxiety. And of course, there's a lot of countries, uh, we have you know, 5,000 international runners that are also trying to prepare for the race where they may be allowed to run. Um, and then the risk is that, of course, they are going to overdo it if they're training really hard now. So I think the best way to put everybody's mind at ease is to say this, is that comrades and Athletic South Africa will make an announcement on the race with enough time to prepare, okay? Um, we are, or, or we went into lockdown, I would say almost in the middle of peak comrades training. So unless people had injuries, most people were really fit going into lockdown. Uh, and obviously there's a little bit of, of worry that they're gonna lose all that fitness, but they will lose very little of that fitness. In fact, um, between two and 4% per week if you do absolutely nothing. So, you know, after a five or six week lockdown, you will have lost a little bit of fitness, but you certainly wouldn't have lost nowhere near all of it. Um, and we also can't train hard indefinitely. So I think everybody, that's, that's my most important message to everybody tonight is that fighting Corona is bigger than each one of us individually. Um, Comrades in Athletics South Africa have done the right thing. They've postponed the date. But this is such a fast-moving target in terms of, of how we're responding to the virus, how the rest of the world is coping with the virus, that it's also difficult to actually put a fixed date on it from that point of view. But when we get into um, the sort of 12-ish weeks, 10, 12-ish weeks to go with, with comrades, we will probably then have a fairly good idea where the comrades will go ahead and we will get a date. And that will present us with enough time to prepare for comrades. The other thing that I want to say about comrades this year, because I feel it's, it's really important in light of the situation the entire world finds itself in, not just South Africa. But we really are in a, in, in a unique time. Um, the world economies are probably only in the, in the sort of trouble they're in now during war times and we are in a type of of war so if we do get to run comrades this year really it's going to be amazing and we'll be able to use it as a real celebration or coming out party if you like and i don't think the focus on comrades this year will be about running your best comrades ever it'll just be about the privilege of being able to take part in an event like Comrades in 2020. So we remain positive that the event will in fact go ahead later in the year. Um, and if we do get to run it, it will be about a celebration rather than Lindsay Parry going out to run the best Comrades he's ever run. And there will be enough time for us to adequately help you to prepare to get a finishers medal. Yeah, Lindsay, let's talk about that because obviously we're going to get those sorts of questions now with regards to training. What should we be doing? What shouldn't we be doing? Uh, and, and I think we're going to, because a lot of people have jumped on this call after we started, I think some people may have missed that and we'll probably reiterate it a few times uh, throughout tonight's webinar. Uh, that is, I think, a really important sentiment that each of us need to really take to heart, that we are in very uncertain times. No one's done this before. It's easy to, to point fingers and criticize, but we're all learning on the fly. And, and I, I, I talk about everyone, runners, uh, you as the coach, 
us, what we're doing at Coach Parry, Athletic South Africa, Comrades, the government, it, it's difficult. I, I mean, no one knows what the answers are. So everyone's trying their best. No one's doing anything because they're trying to be uh, sneaky or underhanded. So I think it's important that we do that we do bear that in mind as well. But let's talk about training. Uh, I mean, you mentioned people were in the shape of their life starting Comrades Peak Training. How do we maintain that? Because I think that's one of the fears is that things do settle down and we and and a date gets announced. We don't want to lose what we've already banked essentially in the first bit of the year. What's the secret? What do we do? Is that a, is that a risk? I don't know. So as I, as I said just now, and this is really important, is that even if we did nothing during lockdown, we faced with the prospect of losing between two and four percent of our fitness per week. So even cumulative over the, the week, over the, the weeks, we, we're really not going to lose a lot if we, um, if we do no exercise. So that, that's a very important point to always remember. But, you know, the thing is we're not going to do no exercise. Uh, and as we go through the webinar tonight, we're going to talk through people in different situations. So people who are in full lockdown that have got equipment at home, people that are in full lockdown with nothing at home, people who are allowed out for one exercise a day. We're going to cover all of these, these bases tonight to give you an idea. But really, if you maintain some form of consistency within that, then you are going to limit those losses even more. And something else that I, that I touched on when I was talking just now is that also we don't want to train excessively hard for 16 weeks, 20 weeks, you know, that, that's not sustainable. So, so we need to peel back with the, with the announcement coming, we need to be reducing our training load anyway, whether, we, whether we're in lockdown or not, we, we would have reduced our load. And the other thing that, that this really presents all of us with a golden opportunity is to focus on strength training, because that's something runners are notoriously good at ignoring. Um, but particularly people that are in full lockdown with very little equipment, this is such a good time for, for them to be working on some strength training, particularly, particularly lower body legs, um, uh, glutes, quads, hamstrings. These are, are really important for when we're running. Um, and in fact, I had a, a, a chat with, um, two of my clients today that we were talking about how, how they can feel themselves getting stronger week by week. And that they said the one sad thing about lockdown ending is that once they get back to the office, they don't know if they'll have time to keep up with the strength training. But what I said to them was that I think the benefits that you're going to feel once you're back on the road and running, mean that you will eke out the time to keep that strength training in there because you'll realize what an important part of um, running or being a good runner and, and, and staying injury free strength, strength training is in. So, you know, I think that last line there on the slide then becomes really important is that if you are in a full lockdown, then really don't panic. I mean, there's no need to be breaking the law and sneaking out for runs because you're worried that you, you're going to be losing fitness. You're going to be losing very little fitness. We are going to give you some ideas today in the webinar of what you can do to maintain some fitness. And remember, we do want to do some moderate intensity exercise every day because that also will help to prop up our immune system. And we know in terms of fighting COVID-19 that having a strong um, immune system and being healthy is your biggest attribute when fighting the disease. Lindsay, if we can touch on, because I see a lot of people are asking the question as well. Uh, obviously, with the postponement and, and no date being announced, how does that affect qualifying? And uh, yes, yeah, some people have qualified, so they're cool. What about those who haven't qualified yet? What, what's the deal there? Look, I wouldn't, uh, it's easy to sit here and say, don't stress about it, but I, I wouldn't stress about it. Comrades is putting a, a plan together. They're working on uh, different scenarios, depending on, you know, how long it is before races come on the calendar, but they are um, in discussions. They're in discussions with ASA. They're in discussions with stakeholders. They're in discussions with um, the, the organizing committees and they're in discussions. Obviously the board is in discussions. They're speaking to two people uh, uh, like me and they are putting in 
um, they are, they, 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 they're putting something into play. So I think that will also be announced and it will be announced timelessly or as timelessly as it can be announced in, in the current um, circumstances. So I think the shortest or the most reassuring answer I can give is that there will be allowances made to create um, qualifying opportunities um, or to allow people to get onto the start line. Let me, that, that's the simplest way I can put it. But, but comrades will definitely will release something so that people know what the rules of engagement are. Yeah, Lindsay, just to put everybody's minds at ease, comrades aren't going to go, surprise! Comrades is happening next weekend. That's not going to happen. So you will get enough time. That's, uh, I think, the message we want to get out tonight. Lindsay, let's, let's get into some of the, the practical suggestions of what people can do right now. And you mentioned splitting it up into three groups. Uh, those that are in like a solid lockdown, like we are in South Africa. Those who have got uh, a bit of a, a softer lockdown. L let's talk through those scenarios and what people in, in those different scenarios can be doing. So look, I personally think that the people that are in a soft lockdown where they're allowed out and they're allowed to exercise, they are probably at the, the, the biggest risk right now because training too hard now with no date um, means that at some point in time, you're going to become both mentally and physically tired and, and, and stale. And that's going to make it difficult to sustain the training or to do the, the, the training when you need to do the training. So for those people, I would use the words moderate volume, moderate intensity. You want to be exercising or running three to four days a week. Um, you want to limit those long runs. So, so 25 Ks at this stage should be the absolute longest you, you're thinking about running on the weekends. And I probably wouldn't do that every weekend unless I was an extremely fast um, runner. Um, so set yourself some, some sort of goals that you would have liked to achieve. So there are no races, there are no events, but there's nothing stopping you from marking out a 5K course and working on your 5K time or 10K time at the, now because that would require very moderate um, volume anyway to require a little bit of intensity but as long as you're not doing too much of that or too high in intensity uh, because that will compromise the, the immune system again then that's a great short-term thing to keep your mind occupied to keep you training keep you fit but to stop you from training too hard and doing too many kilometers and too many long runs and the other you know besides being stale and, and not being able to train for so long the other reason we don't want like very long 30 30k plus or 20 mile plus train runs because that also will uh, in turn compromise your, your immune system so you want to train consistently you want to keep that mileage um, very moderate keep the intensity very moderate perhaps one harder session a week and then strength really again even if you are allowed out for one exercise a day um, you don't have to go to a gym to do strength. And Shona is going to touch on that just now. But I can't emphasize enough how this is a golden opportunity for all the different categories to be working on strength and building, building a good platform for when races return to the calendar again. Absolutely. Um, uh, Lindsay, I forgot to mention this at the start of the webinar as well. Uh, I've been really tardy. Somebody said there's only 200 odd people on, and that's because I forgot to ask you to share. So if you are watching this video, uh, please, would you share it? If you are in a Facebook group that has comrades runners in, or if you have a, a, a running club group that you're part of, please share this video so that your running mates can watch it as well. It would be hugely, hugely appreciated. Uh, and also give us a like, man, or a, a love. We, we're not seeing enough loves and likes at the moment. So uh, please do that. All right, Lindsay, uh, lots of great questions coming in. Please do keep them coming. We're going to get to a few of those right uh, in, in a couple of minutes. Let's take a look at the, the next group of runners, those that are in, in a hard lockdown situation and who are lucky enough to have some cardio equipment with them. So now people who've got a treadmill, very similar advice to what I've given to, to people who can who can run outside. So if you've got a treadmill, you are still at risk of, of training really hard now um, and pushing out a lot of kilometers. And one of the reasons for that isn't 
even it's got nothing to do with comrades it's just got to do with the fact that you're at home you've got nothing to do and so you might as well just get out there and do an exercise don't get on the treadmill every time that happens because you're going to end up running too much so again i'd aim for for three to four sessions a week on your treadmill if you have other cardio equipment around fantastic i mean I, and those that have been and walked this this webinar journey with us over the last four, few years will know that i'm a massive fan of of cross training and strength training and so if you have a, a stationary bicycle um or a, a, a exercise trainer you, you're lucky enough to have something like zwift uh, to keep you company then you know this is a fantastic opportunity for you to to diversify a little bit run a bit on a treadmill and, and use um, that stationary bicycle um, but if you do have if you don't have a treadmill and, and you do you have other stuff like an elliptical elliptical or an elliptico or or a rowing machine or any, any of these things then again three to four days a week between 30 and 45 minutes moderate intense moderate um, intensity exercise is perfect for maintaining fitness and for maintaining a really good healthy um, lifestyle and, and immune system and then obviously the other days in the week that the, the three to four days left strength training strength training cannot um, emphasize that uh, any, any any harder and then guarding run garden running let me leave that for the the, the hard lockdown because i wasn't going to repeat myself with people who don't have anything so i mean the rules there essentially are the same and the warning signs and, and everything are, are the same so if we move on to the next slide then I'll, I'll talk people through if you got no equipment you know then if you have no equipment then strength training is really what you've got some really good core stability there's great exercises you can do with with body weight and, and again i'm not going to move into the the what because i'm shown is going to going to talk us through that um and obviously, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, then you will probably be tempted to run in your garden. And I'm here to tell you, don't put immense pressure on yourself to stay fit through running in your garden. It's, it's almost like a whole new type of running that you're doing. It's as if you're starting running right from the beginning. So you have to be careful how you proceed and you don't want to be running 10, 15. I've seen Oaks doing half marathons and marathons in your back garden. Sure, if it's going to be a once-off during this period and you're doing it for a good cause, fine. Go for it. Fantastic. We'll all cheer you in from the sidelines. But as a general rule, day-to-day -day training, it's not an amazing idea. Um, and perhaps it's, it's a bit of an insensitive joke, but it is a joke that I've been telling people to, to emphasize it, is that when we come out of lockdown, the new pandemic is going to be ITB. You know, if you're going around in a very tight, very confined space, lap after lap after lap after lap, you're putting an immense amount of strain on outside of, of your body, a new type of strain because you're not used to it. You might be fit. So you can run 300 laps around your garden and, and do 15 Ks. Cardiovascularly, fine. Really not good for your muscles, uh, tendons, joints, ligaments, etc. So limit that to every two to three days and i would limit it to between 20 and 25 minutes and really that's enough cardiovascular exercise to keep your heart healthy and the the stress on your body is going to be much much less and very importantly alternate direction so do two or three laps one way turn around two or three laps the other way don't just keep going around and around and around um, in the, the the same direction and then there are heaps of other cardio alternatives that you can do, um, adding in exercises like jumping jacks, up and down, stair running. If you've got a skipping rope, that's something that's really great to get your heart rate up if, you've got, uh, if you don't have any cardiovascular equipment. So there's, there's lots of different kind of um, alternatives to, to running just to get your heart rate up, to give yourself between... Um, 10 and 15 minutes of cardiovascular exercise or, or, or elevated heart rate every day uh, or every second day and that will again help to maintain fitness maintain health um, and maintain good immunity 
Awesome stuff, Lindsay. We've got some great questions coming through. The, the numbers have improved, thankfully. Uh, we are looking a little bit better, which is which is great news. But I, th I, I do feel we are still competing with the Tiger King, unfortunately. Uh, and when you when you've been cutting your own hair for years, uh, we're pretty close. But uh, <laughs> I don't think we've got. Uh, yeah, we've still got a long way to go. Uh, Lindsay, let's get to a couple of those questions. And the first one. And again, it's one of those questions that I think is on a lot of novices' minds. I mean, we spoke about the qualification. Uh, Nick wants to know, if the 2020 Comrades Marathon uh, postponement doesn't work out and the event is cancelled, will the 2019 novices be eligible for back-to-back -back medals in 2021, uh, assuming uh, they were not registered for 2020? I'm presuming you're saying they were registered for 2020. Yeah, so I can't... Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I can't answer questions that I don't know the answers to. Um, so I think the best we can really do there is to to ask Comrades Marathon Association and put out a, a communication uh, around that. So, um, I, I mean, it, it, it essentially stipulates that you run two comrades in a row. And so if there is no run in 2020, then I would imagine in that definition back-to-backs from 219 to 221 would, would count as a back-to-back -back. but yeah I, I i don't know that and i can't say that with with any confidence of course if the race does go ahead but you know the world's in a place where travel between countries still isn't allowed but south africa is under control um and the race does happen then i suppose you 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 wouldn't, but I mean again, I'm I'm speculating. I shouldn't speculate. I'll I'll, I'll find out, and then we can put out a, a answer. Yeah, Lindsay, as I said earlier as well, I think it's important to note too that we're in in uncharted territory. I mean, we've in our lifetime have never been here before. We we are doing this for the first time, as are you who's sitting at home. So there are lots of questions that we don't know the answers to, but they will come to light with time. So. One thing I do know about Comrades and the Comrades Marathon Association is they are a very fair organization. They're not going to do anything uh, that is going to be to the detriment of the running community and to the runners who, who run Comrades. So, Nick, it's a great question. Like Lindsay said, we don't know the answer. If you'd like, you can pop Comrades an email. Info at comrades.com is the email address, and I'm sure they'll have an answer for you. Uh, another question from Lo Richter, and he's saying, thanks for the webinar. You guys are awesome. Lo, no, you guys are awesome for joining us tonight. Uh, you could have been watching the Tiger King, but you chose us. So we are super stoked. Lo says, how does treadmill running compare to running on the road? Uh, difficult to gauge as it feels a lot easier. Uh, but could this be that I'm just getting fitter? Lo, I want your, I want your treadmill, man, because I'm horrible on treadmills. Yeah, so look, it, it's, it, it is physically slightly easier than running on the road, no question. Um, mentally, it's a lot tougher than running on the road. So, you know, you, you, you kind of get uh, swings and roundabouts there. But essentially, um, there's been plenty of research to measure the difference in oxygen consumption when running on a treadmill and running um, on uh, or running outside at equivalent speeds. And definitely on a treadmill is slightly easier. Um, and if you put the treadmill on between one and one and a half percent gradient, then you're probably getting the equivalent degree of difficulty as running outside. Of course, the problem is you can't run on one, one and a half percent gradient all the time. Otherwise, you're going to blow your Achilles um, or calf out. So um, some of the time, just make sure that you, I think even simpler, don't run on 0% all the time. But when you're doing much easier recovery type runs, treadmill on 0%, run nice and easy. When you're running your more aerobic type of, of runs, moder um, adjust the gradient, um, you know, just randomly adjust the gradient so that you, you're sometimes running up a hill and, and sometimes on 0%. Uh, and then when I do my, my hard running on the treadmill, I always keep it at 0% unless you, um, I'm on a treadmill where you start to run out of speed. You know, you're getting to the top end of the treadmill, then you again have got the, the option of using gradient just to increase that degree of difficulty. But in terms of the the overall cardiovascular workout and the aerobic conditioning, extremely close to running on the road. So it's it's a really good substitute for running outside. 
Um, and the example I always use, which is, again, perhaps um, because he's now a persona non grata in our, in our sport, but, you know, Alberto Salazar won comrades and he trained almost exclusively on a treadmill because he was living in Colorado, I think, at the time. Um, and he had to train through American winter with eight foot of snow. So he only had the option of a treadmill. He trained on the treadmill, came to South Africa, I think, in 1994, and he won the comrade. So, you know, if, he's ever needed, if you ever needed an example of how suitable a treadmill is as a substitute for running on the road, there it is. Well, Shona, we're going to get to you now. Stick, stick with us. We, we've got lots of great questions. Uh, Nick, just following up on his saying, he hadn't actually registered for this year. So he would have, if he had, he would have been going for a back-to-back, -back, but he's an international runner and just couldn't justify the, the travel and the expense. So obviously, if it doesn't work out this year and he comes back next year, technically he would be running a back-to-back -back because the race was missed out, but because he didn't enter, does that count? Uh, Nick, again, that short answer to that question is we don't know. Yeah, that... That, that's getting into the gray technicalities. But again, you know, if you look at the definition of, of the back-to-back, -back, I think you probably still in line for it. So, Absolutely. All right. Uh, this is a great question too. And Lindsay, we don't know the answer to this, but uh, uh, someone was asking about the, the Novice Project's talks and the, the ladies' seminars. Are those, those going to be going ahead as webinars like we're doing these? Uh, probably so we're in discussions ab about that um, and so the, the names might change or, or whatever but the, we, we certainly will be making an attempt to speak specifically to um, our women runners and to speak to uh, our novices so some some form of it will be taking place yeah two, two more questions quick about garden running and then we'll get to you Shona the first one from Katakani Katakani was saying you were talking about the, the sort of corners and the possibility of getting ITV. What about running back and forth? Not, not doing any corners, just straight line back and forth. Is that okay? Or are you also looking for trouble from an injury perspective? So, so you're still turning at the, at the end of each one. So you're still placing more of a, a load on your outside leg. So people are, and it's kind of, you should, uh, you should, check your, yourself or monitor yourself on your next run and see how many times you turn on the same leg. And I think that's the important thing is that you need to turn. If you're running shorts up and down, um, you need to, to make sure you're not always turning on the same leg and that you're not always turning in the same direction. Um, and the risks are still there. Um, they probably slightly minimize because if you're running up and down your driveway, it's probably also less undulating and upstairs and around tight corners and, and the rest. So it's p perhaps a little bit better, but I would still be careful about that. Stop, push off, stop, push off, stop, push off. Always on the same side. And then you're always going to put strain down the one side. And, you know, having worked, having worked in different parts of the fitness industry and, and coached uh, or, or done strength and conditioning with footballers and rugby players and cricketers, People turn on the same leg whenever you do do shuttle runs. So that you, particularly when you, you're going 20, 25, 30 minutes, make sure that you're not always turning on the same leg. Cool. And then just a follow up to the running. Do the same rules. This one from Atini. Atini is saying, do the same rules apply for walking in your garden if you're not running? So the walking will um, put far less stress. So I would say if you're walking in your garden, you, you're probably already in a better um, situation. Uh, I would still have two areas of caution though. And the first is that, of course, if you're walking really hard, power walking, that's possibly, again, something we're less used to. So we do need to, to be a little bit careful there. And the, the always going in the same direction is still a risk. So make sure that you are, you know, alternating the, the, the direction. But in terms of the upstairs, downstairs, round tight corners, those kind of things when you're walking are probably much better than when you're running. Cool stuff, Lindsay, fantastic. Let me bring Shona in here if that's cool. Uh, Shona, let's talk about strength training. And, and actually, before I do that, we've got a couple more questions. Obviously, a few people have joined us late with regards to 
uh, qualifiers and what's going to happen with qualifying. Uh, we, we did chat about it at the start of the webinar. We'll touch on it again towards the end. So do stick around. We obviously don't want to give the same information over and over, but we do understand that not everybody was on when we started. Uh, and then also possibility of, of when and, and all of that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, stick around. We'll, we'll touch on that again towards the end of the webinar. But let's talk uh, about strength training, Shona. I mean, for you, when things are normal, strength training is important, but it becomes even more important now, doesn't it? Yeah, I was just about to say, I think we could uh, replay the, the last webinar that we did when I was on and just, just, just sort of superimpose that because, because all the benefits of the strength are, are exactly the same. I think, you know, Lindsay just hit the nail on the head and we've just got an awesome opportunity, especially for those who are in, in, in hard lockdown, like in South Africa, where, you, you know, all the risks of running in your garden, um, are there, we have a great opportunity to then be doing some strength work so that by the time uh, lockdown lifts or what, whatever kind of happens after lockdown we, and we start building some of those miles again, you're in, you're in a great situation and good strength. Uh, you've, you've built some, some strength to help maintain those, those loads as we're as we starting to, to get back into it. Shona, so, you've so. split this very similar to the way Lindsay did as well but along the lines of no equipment, strength equipment wise, and those with. Let's talk a little bit about, when you talk about little to no equipment, what sort of stuff are you, are you talking about? I mean, little to no equipment. So that's, that would be things, basic things like uh, some, some resistance bands, um, uh, yeah, strength bands, some balls, medicine balls, or Swiss balls. I know there's been some questions around the, what, what exactly those are. Uh, light weights, um, yeah, just, just very simple sort of things like that. Again, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've sort of uh, pushed or reiterated around equipment and, and strength training for runners has, has been away from a gym already anyways. So I think that there's still so much that can be done with, with very little equipment and some basic equipment like I've just listed. You know, and then, and, and, you know, as you'll see as we, as we go along, majority of the exercises can even be done without any of that. So um, I think there's there's so much that we can that we can do that we can work on in this time, um, you know, just to start building and and to help with that injury prevention um, going out of lockdown and you know the the residual effects of that from there that will build and and, and complement the running so much. Cool, Shona. Let's talk a little bit about the little to no equipment. How often should we be doing it? And and then we're going to get into some exercises. I also just want to tell people we're going to be sharing exercises. So. If you can, grab a pen and paper, but don't stress too much about it because we're actually going to be showing the exercises and we will be uh, uploading a, re a replay of this video. So you'll be able to see the exercises. So this will be a great overview. And then afterwards, you can go back and watch it as many times as you need. And you can use this to actually do the exercises as well, which is pretty cool. Let's talk about the, the frequency and, and, and some of the things we need to look out for. Yeah, so, so I think the frequency, uh, you know, that, that sort of stays the same. There could be a difference whether you're in, 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 a, in a, um, a hard or a soft lockdown and depending on how much running you're still doing. The general sort of recommendation is, is still really two to three times a week. Uh, so I think if you're doing that as, as, a, as a minimum, as a basic, I think that covers a massive amount um, of, of the benefits that you'll, you'll get from the strength training. If you are in a, in a hard lockdown, like, like most of us are in South Africa and you don't have any access to any equipment, you know, like a tread, cardio equipment, like a treadmill or, or a bike or anything, you know, you could look to maybe to, to do, doing strength work two to four times a week, um, you know, because we, we've got the time and the access. And, and like Lindsay was saying, the, the amount of detraining that you're getting, if you're doing a little bit of something, you, you're not going to have such bad uh, detraining effects. Um, and, the, you know, maybe just to add on to, on to that detraining side of things, the the residual effects of, of us coming from really fit uh, sort of aspects before lockdown going into that means we're going to lose a little bit less. And if we can maintain that and by maintaining that with a little bit of strength work and, and building some strength in this time, I think that'd be awesome. So yeah, so, so two to three times a week as a minimum. If you are in, in, in a hard lockdown, I would say two to four times a week. Um, and like I just say there, the rest and recovery is key. You know, the I feel that as, as South Africa anyways went into lockdown, there was this bombardment of, um, you know, making sure you're doing everything and doing something every day. And there's this live session and there's this uh, yoga session. And, and I think, you know, we still need to be cognizant of, of how much we're doing and, and that we're getting the right rest, rest and recovery. So I still think making sure that you're resting or recovering between sessions. So, um, and varying those sessions. So the type of, of, of work that you're doing in those sessions is key. So, don't do a very high intensity, hard strength session four times a week. 
uh, vary that up between something that's a little bit more uh, high intensity and then perhaps something that's a little bit slower, co more controlled, uh, more strength based, and then perhaps another one that's that's mobility orientated. So, so that that rest and recovery is really really key. And then think about it in the same way that you would your your running program. You know, you you build your running program up over time. So don't just suddenly start now if you haven't done anything and and jump into the the hardest strength program that you've ever done. Take that slow and do very basic exercises. Don't use any weights. Um, and build that up, you know, and perhaps do that for two or three weeks and bring it down a little bit again, um, you know, so that you, you're having a bit of recovery and, and uh, letting your body adapt to those, to those, uh, the stimulus. And then from there, we can take it up again. So just really, really focus on that. And I think uh, something tied into that rest and recovery. And, and again, it's another great opportunity to, to do things to complement the strength training as things like sleep and nutrition. You know, we don't, we don't we always complain that we don't have a lot of time for these things. And I think, making sure that when you are doing any of these strength sessions that your, your nutrition and your, your sleep afterwards is, is really, really good. I think that's a key aspect of, of where we're at. So um, yeah, otherwise, you know, that we can also just move into the other aspects of, of injury risk as opposed to building strength and becoming injury prevention. So just taking all of those things into account, I think is, is definitely key because yeah, coming out of this, we want to be healthier and stronger and, and not necessarily have broken down um, our systems. Yeah, absolutely. Shana, before we jump into the focus areas, I'm just interested to know everybody who's on this webinar, uh, let, let us know in the comments, are you currently doing strength training? Uh, if you are, how many times a week are you doing? And if you're not, let us know how many times you're running just for interest sake. I'm keen to know. So if you would let us know in the comments, that would be, be hugely appreciated. Trina, let's talk about the focus areas. What, and, and focus areas, we're talking which areas of your body you should be focusing on uh, from a strength training perspective. Let's start with sort of pelvic stability, and, and we're going to give examples of exercises. Uh, mountain climbers, tell us more. Yeah, I mean, uh, I love these names of the exercises as we go along as well. And, and, and I think most strength and conditioning coaches have a lot of uh, their, own, their own names for things. But pelvic stability is really, really important. So your hips... And your entire hip girdle is, is really key because most of your power and your stability comes from that area. So, so it's really important to make sure that that is nice and strong. When we're running the amounts that we will be running in the lead up to comrades that we have run, um, it's really key to make sure that that entire hip girdle area is nice and strong because, yeah, like I said, that's where your power and your strength comes from. And if that isn't strong, you tend to compensate in other areas and hence why we land up getting getting injured so so that's why we want that area to to be nice and strong and if and and if you can have a look at, at this example with mountain climbers with dev doing them repeatedly there he um yeah so if you look at his hip area we're wanting that area to stay nice and straight his back is nice and straight through the whole movement and the whole point of that is as as he's bringing his knees up to his elbows his hips aren't sliding from side to side so it's really key to to try and start teaching the body to hold everything in in, in a nice stable position um, you can vary this exercise and, and, and do, do one set, perhaps if you can see right, right leg to, or right knee to right elbow and then left, left knee to left elbow. Then for the next set, you can vary it and you can go into a, um, your right, oh, it's been a long Monday, right, right knee to left elbow and left knee to, to right elbow. Um, and then the third option to vary it is to literally just have a full rotation around. So turning the knee to the opposite side and, and again. So it really is a great exercise to do. Uh, this also contributes towards pelvic stability, which is uh, it's an exercise we call dead bugs, because uh, you look like you're lying there like a, a dead bug. Um, what's really important about this exercise is that we're learning to control your, your stabilizers in your core, right? So um, it's important here when you're doing this exercise. So you can see what Dev is doing there is he's doing an opposite hand and an opposite leg, moving them down. But the, that's not the important part of the exercise. The important part of this exercise is his ability to control his core. So if you're doing this at home, what you need to do is make sure that your back is not arched. If someone was to slide their hand under your back, they shouldn't be able to do that. So the best way to have that happen is to suck your belly button in down to your spine or deep into the ground and, and you move your hands back and your legs back there. If you find that your, your back is lifting as you're moving your hands, just just go until your back lifts. Don't move that any further than, than what you are already. So, so this is an awesome exercise. I must say this is one of my favorites for pelvic stability and, and, and just that core kind of uh, control. So definitely add, add those in. 
you know, glute strength. Uh, I mean, if, if, if I had a rand or, or even 50 cents for every single time someone mentioned glute strength, we, we would be millionaires. And, and there's a reason for that. I think it is a bit of a trend, but at the same time, it is vitally important. If runners have particularly weak glutes, but very tight glutes, and, and that's why we land up with all sorts of injuries. Um, and this is, this is a great exercise to do if you do have a foam roller, um, you're lifting up your hips, you're controlling, again, sucking in that core, keeping sure that your belly button is, is sucked in tight, you raise the hips and you march. As, and, and, and if you can imagine what a running technique looks like, this is, is pretty much it. So we're really trying to work on some hamstrings, some glutes here, um, drive your, your heels into that foam roller um, and you can, you'll start feeling it in the hamstrings as well. You can also pull that foam roller in and out and that will also give you a nice eccentric uh, hamstring, hamstring exercise. Put uh, Bulgarian squats under glute strength because I think it, it does affect that. But really, this you know this is this is quads, hamstrings, glutes. Uh, it's, it's it's an ex. This is one of my favorites as well. I also like it because it's it's single leg, you know, so it's unilateral. But you're working one side, you know, so that it, it stops any kind of uh, um, compensating or imbalances. It forces you to work on those. Uh, what you, what's important here is uh, if you look at it from the front. And uh, you, from the front, you want to make sure that, that that front knee does not dive right or left, okay? So it's in line with my foot the entire time. If you're looking at it from the side, the knee does not extend over the toe, okay? So that movement is down. What a lot of people do with this is they try and lean forward. And then you're just going to put so much more pressure on the knee. Um, and as you're stepping up, as you're coming up again, drive the heel into the ground. And so you start firing through that glute and the hamstring. Um, yeah, this is, this is an excellent exercise. I love this exercise for any down or up comrades. So, so here's, yeah, Brad's putting them up. There's a whole load of uh, glute strengthening exercises that we can do. There's, there's hip thrusters. Those are excellent. So you can do those uh, single leg, um, the hip march, which we showed you, uh, the strength band hip external rotation, which is essentially what we call a clam. Um, those, those really focusing on the glutes. Uh, lots of little terminology here single leg dumbbell shoulder press so that would be you standing on a single leg holding some dumbbells or weights of any kind of sort and and pressing that above your head um yeah and then and then the bulgarian squat so the focus of these glute things is that we're wanting to work a little bit unilaterally and we're wanting to fire those really really small muscles uh because they, they become lazy and the big ones take over Ah, and squats. Yes. So we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't put a, a, a squat uh, video in there, but, but the squats are, are essentially your, your basis for, for most good exercises. Um, for your hamstring strength, yes, these, these are two examples. There's, there's a leg curl. So this is with a band, which is really great. What's, what a lot of people land up doing is, is their, their bums actually start pointing up into the air. So, so again, focus on pulling that core in. Um, and yeah, and you can, and the, the movement is, is about pulling the band closer to your bum. And you can even then focus on the eccentric side of this and, and release that band nice and slowly, which, which would really help. The leg curl, if you do it the other way around and you're lying on your back and you have a, a, a Swiss ball or an exercise ball of sorts, so you're lying on your back, you lift your hips and you pull the exercise ball in and out. So all of that is hamstring exercises, which I, yeah, I can't emphasize enough about uh, runners and, and their lack of hamstrings. Uh, the foot, foot core, uh, which we, we like to call it, you know, so many of us are struggling with um, plantar fasciitis and, and, and other injuries which lands up coming from, from weakness within the foot. Um, this isn't a calf raise with resistant inversion. This is, this is a, uh, we call these just, yeah, toe, toe uh, sort of shuffles or, or towel uh, shuffles. These are toe crunches. There we go. Um, so what you want to do is you lay a towel out in front of you uh, and you're wanting to, to keep your foot your toes all nice and flat and use all your toes to pull that towel in closer and closer. They're like mini bicep curls for your toes, essentially. And, and if you think about when you're running and you're running 90 kilometers, literally your toes are almost doing this for 90 Ks. It's, it's why we land up with black toenails and, and all the rest. So this is going to be focusing on the arch of your foot. You can see over there. Yeah, exactly that. Just focusing on that arch, making sure that uh, we, we're working those really tiny little intrinsic muscles with, with, within the foot. And, um, yeah, working on those. I think so much of what we do from a strength point of view, we don't focus on these things. And now we've got a great chance and time to do them. This is cool. You can take a rolled up towel uh, and, and you do a calf raise on this roll up, rolled up towel. It's, it, it really helps with that uh, plantar fascia in, in, the, in the foot. And 
uh, where that's quite tight for people and it's lacking a little bit of strength. This is, this is quite an awesome exercise to, to focus on that. Core strength, again, this ties in, you know, it all, it all ties in together with the pelvic stability. Um, this, it looks pretty simple, but if, if, if you jump down now and tried it, you'd find that you, the goal here is that you're trying to stop your body from swaying from side to side. So you're giving your body a stimulus by taking the balance away from both hands and moving your, your arms across the chest. The goal there is to keep the, the hips nice and still, try not to rock from side to side. Um, and yeah, you can, you'll feel the, the core working quite nice. These are very basic and, and, and most people will know these, um, but a prone bridge, awesome exercise to, to start with, definitely. The goal here, what you want is you want the elbows under the shoulder. So you don't want to be too far ahead. You can see that my elbows are directly under my shoulders and um, not in front of, of, of the shoulders. And, and from there, nice straight body, sucking in, in, the, in the core again and, and your glutes as well. Make sure that those are nice and activated as, you go, as you're doing these exercises. And this you can vary. You can do it as, as a rep-based exercise or alternatively um, time-based and, and you know, hold it for a certain amount of time um, or for a certain number of reps. These are great because not many people focus on, on the inner thighs um, and, and this is an awesome exercise for that. And again, it, it, it encompasses that entire pelvic girdle and, and, and hamstring sort of issues that people have. So a side bridge, I'd recommend that you start with this half bridge that like we've got there. So my bottom leg is bent, um, allowing a little bit more stability and just, a, just raising the leg up and down. Again, you want to have that body nice and straight, everything uh, nice and stable. If you want to make that exercise a little bit harder, just straighten out the, the lower leg. Um, these exercises are for, are for posture. Uh, you, you're wanting to try and relax in the shoulders a little bit. You know, no one really focuses on posture. If you have quite a weak pelvic girdle, you'll find that that tends to tilt forward and we tend to crouch over. So we're wanting to do, you know, a lot of opening up of our postures. Most of us work and sit in this position the entire time. So it's great to really work on these exercises to, to open that up a little bit and, and, and focus on the, the shoulder girdle at the back. Yeah, same, same, same things for these exercises. That's just an alternative. Um, and, and those are great with, with some band work. So Cool, Shona, we've pretty much covered everything in, in quite a bit of, of depth here. And you mentioned that's with a little bit of equipment and then with the no equipment. And uh, it's very similar in, in the sense that the focus areas stay the same. The exercises are pretty much the same. And we're just going to literally just breeze through them if that's cool with you. Uh, and then get to some questions because I think uh, we do have quite a few questions that we want to get answered. Uh, and, and I mean, we've pretty much gone through all of these. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add as yeah. I flick through them. No, I think, I think as you flick through them, that's fine. I might just touch on one or two other things. I think, um, you know, the technique of what you're doing is important, right? So it's not always about what exercise you're doing. It's about how you're doing it. So to really focus on some of that stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's number one point for me and, and rather, rather make sure that your technique is right than, than doing, doing it at a high intensity because you're just going to find yourself getting injured again. So, I think the reason why we wanted to reiterate this with the no equipment and, and with the equipment is, is exactly for that point, is that so, much of, so many of these exercises are able to be done with, without what people consider gym equipment. You know, this is, this is all stuff we've always said that we can be done at home, um, and now we're, we're pretty much forced to do it at home, which I think is, is, is a great opportunity. So, so yeah, I would, I would definitely consider doing those with the right technique. Um, Ensure that your rest and recovery and your time between sessions is key. You know, Lindsay did speak a little bit about around some extra cardio type of exercises. And yes, I think those are excellent. But, you know, those are things like tuck jumps and burpees and things that, that people, you know, have never really done. So again, I would, I would enter or, or touch those with, with a little bit of caution um, and, and just make sure that you're following something that's a little bit more structured. I think, you know, there's so much out there, especially during this time, I would, I would rather bring in some of the questions and be able to, yeah, to help people with, with those. Absolutely. Just a comment from uh, Nicholas uh, saying he can 100% vouch for the comrades, uh, for the comments on the strength training. He's been doing the Coach Perry online strength session since lockdown started about three weeks now. Uh, and since he's in London, he is able to run three days a week too. He says he's already feeling stronger, particularly on the hills, pretty much run the same long run route every weekend. So it's easy to monitor those improvements. So uh, yeah, there's someone who is following what we're doing over at Coach Perry. And I'll share uh, some details. Shona mentioned the uh, the, the sort of technique and the form, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what we're talking about in a mo. Lindsay, can I bring you in here if we can? <laughs> Great question, and from lots of people asking about the Comrades training programs. Do they need to keep following the program as is, or do they need to make changes? 
No, I mean, they definitely need to make changes. Look, I, I realize not everyone was on from the beginning. So maybe I, let's just repeat what we said at the beginning. And that is that Comrades has been postponed. Um, we don't know what the new date is. It's impossible to train um, indefinitely. Um, and certainly in the, in the South African context, in a, in a hard lockdown, it would be irresponsible to, to do so. It would essentially be encouraging people to, to break the law and, and, and to get out. <clears throat> so I think um, training needs to be adjusted, needs to be adjusted down. We want to be training moderate intensity, moderate volumes now. So again, if you can train outside, you're actually probably in more danger of overtraining for this period um, than people that are, are in, in their homes and, and unable to train. Um, I, want to, I think I need to reiterate at this point that even if you did no training whatsoever, you would lose between 2 and 4%. So you would be losing very little training. It's important to do some exercise. So if you can do some, some form of cardiovascular exercise three to four days a week, to maintain your, and you're not doing it to maintain fitness, but you will maintain a great degree of, of fitness, but you will maintain health and you will boost your immune system. And I think what we need to do, and that's why we brought Shona in here, yeah, is to emphasize strength training. So this is a unique opportunity that we don't get often as runners to really knuckle down and work on our strength um, and come out of this actually in a better place with our bodies more protected to be able to handle um, the stress of running better. If I unmute myself, my bad. Uh, okay. Great question from Komoto. Komoto say, uh, Komoto say, if Comrades is run and not cancelled and it's happening, let's say hypothetically in the third quarter of the year, what high level adjustments would one need to explore in your training in relation to uh, possible and warmer climate conditions? It's a, a great question. And funnily enough, it's one that we get asked so much by our international runners because a lot of them aren't used to running in the heat. Yeah, look, and, and, and we will be training through our, our winter. So um, look, again, because of how the seasons change in South Africa, I think whatever the date that is set, even though we may be in our taper phase, um, we will be able to do enough training in fairly warm conditions. So we will probably not be too badly off. But if you live in a part of South Africa that really is still cold until much later in the year, um, and you are worried about... Um, the Durban heat and humidity, you can, and you have access to a gym, um, you can spend some time in a sauna. Uh, and if you spend between 20 and 30 minutes twice a week in a sauna, that will make an enormous difference to improving your ability to handle the heat later in the year. Um, or you can adjust the time of the day that you train. So train in the afternoons or over lunchtime, um, once or twice a week, that will also make a big difference and allow you to to improve your ability to um, compete in the heat. But yeah, I think if you live in South Africa, that's not going to be a, a big problem because even those um, last two weeks leading into the race with very little training, we will be exposed to the um, ambient, South African ambient temperatures enough that we'll be fairly well adjusted come race day. Cool. I just wanted to share a few resources. We are running out of time rapidly. There are lots of questions coming through. If you do have any questions, please pop them into the comments below. We'll try and get to as many of them as we can tonight. But I just wanted to share some resources with you uh, before a lot of people do jump off that we think can be valuable and helpful to you at this time. And the first one is our series of podcasts that we put on at Coach Parry. One is called Run With Coach Parry. The other is the Ask Coach Parry podcast. And particularly the Ask Coach Parry podcast, uh, there have been some great questions about training during the lockdown things like garden running uh, the day like the the concerns and that sort of thing so uh, go back through the archives and check those out there's some great stuff we're also still putting out weekly videos you can get them at coachparry.com forward slash youtube uh, and then also comrades.com has got some great resources on as well definitely check that out these comrades webinars we will be doing more of them as well the dates are still up in the air we're hopefully going to be doing more than what we had scheduled so we are chatting to comrades at the moment so that we can stay in touch with you and help you through this as well
And then what we've also done, uh, as much as we ran through some examples of, of strength training and that tonight, uh, we've put together a free home-based strength training plan for you that if you go over to this URL now, it's coachparry.com forward slash home. You can grab yourself a free home-based strength training program there now. Uh, and then we've also, a couple of people have mentioned in the comments and they've really enjoyed it, is what we've been doing over at Coach Parry is three live strength classes a week. Uh, on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday. And the response has been amazing. And if you'd like to join those, you can get all the details at coachparry.com forward slash lockdown. Shona mentioned uh, the, the, the form and making sure you, you're doing your strength stuff with the right technique. And in those classes, uh, there is an opportunity for Shona and uh, Devlin, our other strength and conditioning coach, to, to give you feedback on your technique. So you, you can make sure that you are doing the right thing. So yeah, those are, those are the strength and conditioning uh, things we wanted to share with you. Let me just check if there are any other questions. Uh, with regards to sort of training, uh, this is a difficult question to answer, Lindsay. Pe so someone was asking with regards to if you do get COVID-19, should you still be training? Uh, I mean, we're not medical practitioners, so it's really difficult for us to be, uh, to be giving that sort of advice. But what would you say to somebody, is comrades still on the cards for them if they pick up COVID-19? So, look, I'm actually quite happy to answer that question. I think I know enough about what's going on and researched it, it, it enough. So, firstly, if you do contract COVID-19, it is a new virus that very few of us have got um, the ability to, to fight. Um, and, yes, there are some that are lucky and they get a very mild form of, of the the, the illness um but for anyone that moves into well in fact anybody who gets it because if you exercise while you've got it you in fact are increasing your risk of going into the second phase and of course once you're in the second phase you've increased your risk of going into the third phase which for a lot of people ends in death so for me it's it's actually quite simple it's a it's a new disease the the branch of people that are at the most risk of comorbidity in other words those are things that that um make it much more likely that you will be in a very serious fight for your life with COVID-19 are people with existing heart conditions um high blood pressure um hypercholesterolemia and um uh, diabetes so for me that tells me that the this one of the things that this virus does is attacks the heart. And so when you, are, when you contract COVID-19, the responsible thing to do is not to exercise. And to not exercise for 14 to 21 days after contracting the, the, the disease. Um, and then your chance of being able to run comrades are entirely dependent on how severe that um, version of the, the disease or, or how severely you are affected by the, the COVID-19. So ob obviously if you end up with hospitalization, um, then you are going to take weeks and months to, to recover and be, be fit again. Um, but if you get a very mild version, um, you will probably be exercising two to three weeks afterwards, no problem, and life will carry on as it was before. Sean, if I could just ask you a quick question, a great one coming in. Someone was asking about uh, sort of doing those strength exercises as a circuit or should they do all the reps of one and then move on to the next? How many reps, how many sort of uh, different circuits of those exercises should they be doing in training? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no one easy answer to that. I think I, I quite enjoy the circuit, prescribing the circuit way of doing things. I, um, I like the the sort of fatiguing factor that comes from that for endurance runners. Uh, that's one way to do it, which I think is great. It's almost doing one set of each exercise continuously, having a rest and going again. Um, alternatively, you can almost uh, do what we did in our live session today and, and you superset particular exercises. So you take one exercise and another one, you do one set of each, you're know, following each other, and then you complete all three or four sets, depending on how many have been pre prescribed. So I think there's, there's benefits to both of those. Um, and for endurance runners, you're wanting to be doing more like a higher rep load with perhaps with a bit of a, a lower weight. So 
we're looking, you know, anywhere between, you know, eight, eight to 12, 15 reps of, of a certain exercise. I think that's, that's where you want to build up to. Uh, don't don't go out there and just jump straight into 15 to 20 reps start start around eight and build yourself up but yeah we're wanting to get a higher rep load as as we as we do these things brilliant all right uh, on the screen right now just some some background info about what we do over at coach parry we've got uh, comrades and more importantly lockdown training programs just so you know we've got treadmill and non-treadmill training plans that you can access to right now uh, you can access to our entire team of coaches you can access them in the forums daily so you can get the help you need when you need it i mentioned those live uh, weekly strength classes that we do three times a week and we also do weekly members only calls kind of like what we're doing tonight uh, but with our members and it's your opportunity to join a group of, of more than a thousand other runners from around the world who are pretty much in this together and we'd love for you to be part of it uh, you can uh, follow training plans that are backed by science give you direct access to the experts that wrote it no more guesswork head over to coachparry.com forward slash lockdown uh, to join right now uh, and then Lindsay just a, a final question on the strength programs and like the live classes we're doing people saying they're a bit concerned that everyone seems to be doing live classes should they be jumping around or should they pick one and stick to it what's the what's the deal yeah so i mean the, you your often uh, answers in a question that's what i was i was going to say is i think um don't you'll get good exercise from going around and getting variety and doing different different um strength classes you're not going to get any consistency or progression so you really want to choose an instructor or a, 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 a program that you like and that you enjoy and that's who you, you, you want to follow through these five weeks. That way you're going to get good progression. You're going to um, have some sort of systematic um, plan in place and you're going to get the best out of your three to five weeks in, in lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Lindsay, it's been amazing. We can go on all night, I'm sure. Let me just thank Shona first for her time tonight. Shona, thank you very much. Lots of great feedback from your strength programs, people doing them on our platform and the free one that you can pick up uh, if you go to coachparry.com forward slash home. Uh, I know you've put in a lot of work over the last few weeks to get those ready and out. And uh, we, we're starting to see the sort of rewards of that. And uh, obviously people are loving them. But thanks for your time and being on tonight's webinar and some, some great advice. Yeah, shot sure, Brad. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see all the runners get nice and strong and, and get out on the road again and, and, and really smash that, but being, being nice and strong athletes. So yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. And Lindsay, uh, as always, you as well. Uh, people love having you on these sorts of webinars and answering lots of questions. Your, your parting shot from this? Yeah, I think again, just don't panic. If you are in, in a full hard lockdown, don't have any access to cardiovascular equipment, you're going to lose very little fitness uh, during this period. Uh, Comrades has been postponed, so there really isn't any need to be training really, really hard. Use this time to work on, on strength training. I think that's been our, our big takeaway message from uh, this particular um, webinar. And as soon as we're out of lockdown, we'll have another webinar and we'll revisit what sort of training you can do to get back into it. But the focus will still be on training to maintain health and to maintain good immunity to give you the best chance of fighting COVID if you do get it. Absolutely. And from myself, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to comrades and to Bonnie Tass for making these webinars possible. Uh, we love catching up with you and it doesn't matter where you are in the world, stay safe. Uh, and yeah, do, do be in touch. If there's anything we can do, head over to coachparry.com. Uh, you can also be in touch with the folks at Comrades. Thanks for your time this evening, and we look forward to catching up again soon. Cheers.